Another extremely important factor to determine the amount of culture shock that we go through is location within societies. And this is where there is something that is very often misunderstood regarding China. Now, if we wanted to place China in the original Erin Meyer map, then it would be in the green corner, a little bit closer to the blue corner, as you can see in this global disk map. If I'm going back to the original Erin Meyer map, it would be a cluster together with Korea and Japan, but a little bit closer to that flag of the United Kingdom here in this map. And that's because we call that cluster of countries so-called Confucian societies. But Confucian or not, there is a little bit of confusion here. I come from Europe, I am Hungarian, although I have lived in Asia for a very long time. And I can tell you when Western professionals prepare themselves for doing business in China, very often what they want to understand is ancient philosophies like Taoism, Buddhism, Confucianism, and so on. Then when they arrive in China, they typically arrive in a location where they are going to work, like Shenzhen, Shanghai, or Beijing. And they are very surprised that people there are not patient, obedient, harmonious. Actually, people in these cities are competitive, result-orientated, tough, and they always seem to be in a hurry. So then they are asking me, Gabor, I read in these books about Chinese culture that Chinese people follow Confucian values. Now, if you look at the mainstream of China as a national culture, indeed, most of the population takes very seriously traditional Chinese values of avoiding confrontation, respecting authority, being patient, not hurrying, and so on. But the 10 or 20% of the Chinese population that most foreigners meet, just like yourself and most foreigners work together with, they are not like this at all. Due to very intensive modernization during the last 100 years of Chinese history and the dramatic political changes that have taken place over there, China basically imported an entire set of values from different places, including the United States and then the Soviet Union that heavily influenced China through the political leadership of being tough, competitive, result-orientated and trying to get results in a fast and agile way. What does it mean in practical terms when you are working with Chinese people? One important thing is not to be too surprised when you find out that Chinese people switch back and forth between traditional and modern values in a fairly flexible way. This is because over their lifetime and also in different roles in society, sometimes they must adhere to the traditional value set and sometimes they have to follow the set of values dictated by a very fast-moving modern economy. Education is a great example for that. While they are going through their education, Chinese people are supposed to be obedient, patient, and speak when they are spoken to. However, once they come out of education and they become professionals, they shed their patience. They are supposed to be determined, competitive, and get things done in an economy that has very little time to think twice. One of the reasons why affluent urban Chinese people like sending their kids to the West to study is because American, British or French education prepares them for exactly the kind of values that they have to follow, they have to understand and they have to adhere to in the modern, urban, industrialized China. On the other hand, when they are with their family, Chinese people have a tendency to slow down, become more caring, becoming more supportive, becoming more helpful. In other words, representing the values of traditional China a little bit more. Beyond learning not to be too surprised and too confused about this, there is also another very important practical lesson. To some extent, when we are working with Chinese people, we have to be able to learn to skip back and forth between these two competing cultures. When we are in an office with Chinese people, or at a manufacturing plant, or at a container port, we usually feel that the 
pace is very fast. The thinking is very practical. When something is wrong, Chinese people are not afraid to tell you it is wrong. They don't beat about the bush. They can be fairly critical with each other as well. On the other hand, when the time comes to have a longer meeting, to have a networking over meals, for building personal relationships, suddenly we feel that they slow down, they become very attentive, and in these situations, it can even be considered uncool to become emotional and to be in a hurry. Please remember that after a long period of dormancy, today China is one of the fastest growing economies and most dynamic markets in the world. It means people have to be fast, people have to be determined, people have to be flexible, people have to get things done. But in this kind of environment, people have to make decisions based on limited information very fast, which also means it's easy to make mistakes. And because of that, Chinese people rely very heavily on social networks that take time to build up that will protect them in case something goes wrong and there is the need to correct the previous decision fast and in a flexible manner. And this is why Chinese people rely almost for survival, but definitely for business success on both the old and the new. The slow going, trust based, attentive, helpful, traditional Chinese culture and the competitive, agile, flexible, determined, modern Chinese culture. These two cultures are very often overlooked. Too many people think that China is a homogenous society, basically following a 5000 year old culture code. And people can be completely shocked when they go to a place like Chongqing city and they find out how fast, how flexible and focused Chinese people can be at work. I think this is the secret of becoming a successful business person in China. And perhaps I can add one more tip. Whenever you're confused, ask somebody who has extensive experience in China, because this reality is not only complex with these two alternative cultures, but also changes fairly fast. But anybody who is from China or knows China fairly well will be more than happy to help you and apply this general principle to very specific situations. I hope that you will contact me and ask me questions about work situations that you wanted to solve, but it didn't go very well. You wanted to solve, it went very well, but you're not sure why, or you need to solve in the future. And I very much look forward to your questions. I will be very happy to answer them. Thank you very much.